Hey, let's continue. Uh, the second rule uh, from uh, this pr uh, this report is uh, the beneficence. Well, this means that we need to uh, before we really launch a product uh, supported by machine learning, and we need to uh, f we need to uh, foresee what is the risk and what is the benefit, and we want to minimize the risk and maximize the benefit and then we also should have a plan to mitigate any realized harms possible and for this part I have a personal story well if you are a gamer and you may know a uh, a a a product called Steam, right? And then in the Steam, well, probably one year ago, they launched a new feature called Steam Labs. Well, they are trying to add some new uh, artificial intelligence stuff to the Steam product. Uh, and one of the product they launched in the Steam Labs is called uh, Interactive Game Recommender. So, well, they're gonna uh, ask me, do you like this game? And you click, I, I, want, I can click yes or no. And then, based on a few clicks, and then they can continue uh, recommend me uh, the new games that I might be interested in. So, I, I of course, I want to try this feature and see how it works. And when I first uh, started this, and they show they show me, uh, hey, based on what you have. What you have played in the last couple of months and do you like this game and I click yes because that is the game I played for a long time and then they asked me a few more questions and they, then they started to push me a total of 10 games and when I saw those 10 games and I'm not quite impressed because for some of the games I, I, I have heard about them but I'm not interested in that and they are kind of similar to what I have been playing but not that exactly the same or they have some new features added to uh, what I have been playing but those are not the new features I'm, I appreciate that so well is that harmful and I would say no not really uh, but if uh, you launch a product supported uh, supported by machine learning models and then you need to really foresee what kind of harm it can show to the user well and uh, in uh, in uh, steam and uh, there are some of the games that I shouldn't really play unless I'm a hundred percent sure that I'm by myself and no one is watching my screen you know what kind, what kind of games they are right and I think you're out of doubt and you may know that and anyhow for those games uh, well if uh, I was they re recommend me this kind of game and then this may really harm my experience because when I'm using the steam lab and then there might be people sitting right next to me and then if they see I'm browsing that kind of games and this can be embarrassing right so this is uh, this is oh, some of the risk or the harm that you should really foresee and then we want to talk about how we can really do that and the first thing is we want to identify the potential flaws of your machine learning model uh, before you really launch that and especially when you are uh, uh, are providing this machine learning as a service to your user and then you really want to uh, foresee some of the flaws and another thing is well if your system uh, is designed to provide real-time feedback or interactive feedback to the author uh, to the users and then you want to pay attention to two things well one is model inference attacks and another one is model in inversion attacks so those are two of the common attacks that we can do harms to machine learning algorithms and well probably this is the first time you have heard about that right so for example for the model inference attacks well it means well when um, well if I have a interactive machine learning model and when I give a input it can al always give me the output, Im output immediately and then I can keep on probing the machine learning system so that I can figure out what kind of training data set this machine learning algorithm is used and then by figuring out what kind of machine learning uh, what kind of data set it it has been used and then I can do more harms to the machine learning model okay and another thing well you may also know uh, well that another name of that is machine learning model poisoning okay well 
this this kind of machine learning model is the machine learning that takes users input and then as part of the uh, part of the incremental training set so let me give you a very small example i'm only having a machine learning model which can predict dog versus cat okay and then it can take users input and then if many users says this image is a dog and then my machine learning model is going to take that as a dog so if i'm vicious enough i'm picking up a cat image and i constantly say this is a dog and then i bring up another similar image as a similar cat image i say this is a dog again so if i'm doing this for a long time and finally i'm gonna send a lot of poisonous additional incremental training set to the machine learning model so finally this machine learning model can be poisoned okay so those are some of the potential risks that we want to pay attention to because when you are pro when you are when you have a static machine learning model you don't have to worry about this thing but if you having if you're providing a machine learning model as a service well machine learning can be vulnerable you and you want to pay attention to that and the third rule we want to talk is is justice okay so for justice well it has a very high bar well and is that is the bar really always that high in industry probably no because that is the bar for the word of the scientists but anyhow i want to show you what is that so for uh for the research it should not target specific people i'm talking about individuals so uh, if you want to you know, do a machine learning model and then try to uh, uh take a specific person and using that sub specific person data and then try to predict something on this person and this may not be ethical in the world of science okay and another thing is well if you are trying to target a group of people based on their technical competency or a group of people based on their personal demographics and then that is not ethical as well so as i said this rule is a very high bar and in industry probably the bar doesn't have to be that high okay and later we are going to talk about what we need to do uh, well in the industry and the last thing is well uh, respect for the law and the public interest and well we we really have to bring up the legislations and we need to refer to the laws and since uh, i have been doing the educational data mining and of course FERPA is one of the uh, one of the act we really have to respect and it says that if a <clears throat> uh, if a children uh, if, if a kid is uh, less than 18 years old and then i have to obtain the consent before i can use the educational data for anything okay so that is the FERPA law and it's only it's it's on it's in united states and it only protects the educational data and in europe uh, in the eu and there is a gdpr and the gdpr well if you only consider the educational data and then it is uh, can, uh, the scope is kind of similar to the FERPA. However, this GDPR doesn't only protect the educational data, it protects all the personal identifiable data on the internet. Okay, so well, this means in the Euro uh, European Union or EU that the legislatures are a little bit ahead than what we have in the United States. Well, and there are a few cool things I want to uh, highlight. So the first thing is, well, uh, we need uh, to use the data from a person and we need to have a clear affirmative act. So and then I have to give uh, the specific informed and unambiguous information about what i'm going to do and i'm going i'm about to obtain the data from the person before i can really use that so well uh, if i just uh when you register for a website for example and then there are a bunch of the check a uh, checkbox and usually we don't want, even want to read that we just to check 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 right so if there is a box pre-checked and then that violates the gdpr so if you are doing any business in europe and you can't do this okay and another really cool thing about gdpr is the user has the right 
to be forgotten. So even though uh, I have a a system and I have already collected the data from my users, and then they have the right to say, uh, when I want my data to be deleted. So the user has the right to say that. And when the user said that, and then I have to do that. So that is really cool about the GDPR. So, and well, remember, FERPA is only protects the educational data. And for the GDPR, it protects all the personal data. Okay. Okay, so, well, uh, let me pause here and I'm going to continue in the next video.